Hi. Yeah. What is this time? I've been terrible about recording, so I'm starting off this vlog. Hi, welcome. With a catch up because today or in the past 24 hours, I read four books. <laughs> Listen, my SD card was plugged into my laptop. I did not want to go and get it, but I also flew through all of these and I feel like partially my excuse can be that the first three are picture books. So I specifically requested these new from my library because I was obsessed with these when I found them. The first one I found when I was researching books for the plus size readathon. So this one is like a plus size main character. By the way, these are all picture books by Phoebe Wall, who's an illustrator and gorgeous, gorgeous artist. But it's four short little stories all in each season of the year. So you follow Little Witch Hazel throughout the year and each story has its own little precious message but then the whole thing comes full circle. I just have to show you this art because it is unreal. So this is from the first story in spring called The Orphaned Egg. And the art is just precious. So. The whole book is just cozy and gentle. Like obviously she's shown as plus size and hairy legs. There's like mermaids underwater. I absolutely loved that book. I gave it five stars. And then I had two others by her that I specifically requested. I knew what none of these were about other than that one. So I picked these two up on a whim. So I finished this one a little bit teary just because the ending of it was super sweet. And I started this one, which was a mistake. <laughs> Honestly, if that one was five stars, this one is six stars. I gobbled this up and I was sobbing the entire time and it's like 20 pages. So this one is about a boy named Leo and his dad who live in this adorable blue house. It's run down but it's their house and they love it and they find out the landlord is selling the property so they have to move out. So the whole story is just like moving away and feeling sad that you're losing your house but then holding on to those memories and building a new home for yourself. I was distraught. I was reading this on FaceTime with Bonnie, just absolutely bawling. The art is absolutely precious. Like once again, I am floored by how cute and cozy that Phoebe draws. I need to own this. I'm not, re actually, you know what? Sorry, library. I'm the first and only person to check this out because I will be keeping it. It was so, so sweet and so sad. Absolutely perfect if you need to help a child understand moving and really just brought up some memories of my experience having to move out of my childhood home. So, so by the time I was looking at the third one, I was like, what is this one about religious trauma? Like what other part of my life can we touch on? But this one, was the escape that I needed. So this third one's called Backyard Fairies. Again, very green and gorgeous, gorgeous writing style. This one's just a poem about a little girl who is looking and looking and looking for fairies and just cannot find them. I don't want to say too, too much because this one's a very short story compared to the other two, but just again, so, so sweet. I think this one's more around three stars, but like, it has such whimsy and it made me just wish to be a kid again. So I'm so happy my library took my suggestion on buying these and I hope every kid in my neighborhood gets to experience these. Maybe not this one, cause this one hurt. Definitely this one and this one. And this one's perfect for any season. Like reread it four times a year and yeah. I will be putting them on Goodreads and they will be counting toward my Goodreads goal. After I finished those, I was like, well, what can I read next? I'm looking at my TBR cart with all of my library books on it. And I don't know what drew me to this book because it is not the one that's due to the library next. So I really had no sense of urgency to read it, but I was just drawn to it. Um, this book is called Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think this is another like Kylo Ren inspired book, which is my bane of my existence, but I put that aside because, I mean, he looks a bit different. I don't know. And when I tell you I read this in two sittings, I just finished this like an hour ago and five stars. <laughs> well, I don't know what formula I cracked in reading all these five star books. This one's about this wedding planner named Ama, who just got her biggest wedding of her entire life. It's like an influencer who's now an actress and so it's gonna be a lot of publicity. But they've also specifically requested Elliot to work on the wedding who is the florist that she had a thing with three years ago and there's been a falling out and now they have a forced proximity thing going on where they have something clouding the relationship that happened in their past. Which I know sounds like a thing that's been done before. But guys, this book was 
laugh out loud funny. And every single time I read romance, I have to overlook how corny a lot of the dialogue is. There genuinely was only like two, exactly two times where I thought that this was corny or I didn't like the dialogue. The rest of it was so well written. I loved everything about this book. It had the right pacing. Oh, and this book does the thing where it has her perspective now and his perspective three years previous, which typically I don't like because it leaves you in the dark for so long of what happened. I devoured this book. I don't know who she worked with to pace it the way it's paced, but this publisher, kudos to them because that was absolutely addicting. I really liked her as a main character because she's just a whirlwind of like get shit done and he's grumpy. He inherited this flower business from his dad and his dad was the one who was passionate about it so he's had to learn the role and learn to appreciate it whereas she's just like the natural talent at what she does so he's very stoic and straight faced and like don't bother me and she's like buying everyone donuts and <laughs> has a to-do list a million miles long which I feel like was so me so I don't know I really saw myself in pieces of her. This guy was so attractive without being annoying or overbearing. It just felt so unique. And I know I've struggled a lot with romance recently feeling overly corny, so I was really surprised that this one did not throw any curveballs and it was just all the way through completely amazing. I feel like I haven't read a book like that in a long time. And I don't think I would have picked this book up. I think my friend Sonya really enjoyed this, but they also enjoy a lot of books that I don't, so I didn't put too, too much faith in that, but now I'm like, when's your next book, Julie? <laughs> Julie, drop the next book. I'm in line. I'm just... <laughs> So good. A tattooed man with flowers all over him. I can't say enough good things about this. I have a ton of books out from the library right now and they might be starting to be due soon. So I don't know how long this vlog is going to last, but I just want to read a couple of library books. I mean, obviously I'm ready and willing to be surprised by things that I didn't know I would like. So as I wash my dishes, I'm going to pull up a name that we haven't heard in a while. I started this on audiobook like two months ago. And I still have to finish it. So I've been meaning and meaning to get to this. I'm gonna go recheck it out from my library for like the fourth time. And I don't even know where I was. I was like 200 pages in. I just got to the part where he's elected and now he's like getting the handover about all the wars happening. So it's requiring a brain cell. So I might just restart this from the section that I'm on and clean my house. Cause dang, I cleaned for two hours straight tonight and I needed a little break. It is, holy shit, 11.30, so it's past my bedtime. Tonight, I started a couple of books, and I was like, mm, I'm just gonna read one that I can do in one sitting. So I had out from the library the graphic novel called The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag? Ostertag? This is a YA graphic novel about this girl. I just read it and I don't know her name. What's her name? Morgan. She lives on a really small island in Canada, and get saved from drowning by this Kelpie, which is like a seal shapeshifter, and then kisses her thinking she's having a hallucination. But that kiss ended up tying this Kelpie to the earth so now she can walk and be on earth and they can be together and help out all the seals in the ocean. With that, this Kelpie wants to be in a relationship and Morgan has not told anyone that she's gay. It's mostly about her and her friend group. Her parents have just gone through a divorce and she and her little brother have fallen out. So really it's just a coming of age story about living on this little island town and having this plan that you're gonna grow up and come out and be comfortable, how that can be disrupted. I mean, needless to say, I read this in one sitting. It was really precious. I like the art style of it. Very sweet and easy to read. I don't know, I just think it was cute. I liked it. It was a really nice summer read because it's set during the summer. I think her and her friend group were really funny and like very representative of how young people talk and act. I just thought it was real. It was a good message. It was done really succinctly. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. That being said, I did start like three other books and I don't know which one I wanna continue. And I forgot during the month of July, my pre-order for Catherine Moon's next book came in and I have to read Catherine Moon's new book. It's the third book in the Rooksgrave Manor series. Should I do like a library haul of stuff that I have out? All right, ignore my stuffies while I made my bed. Hi. So this is my TBR cart full of all the things I currently have out from the library. Some of the books that I have checked out are left over from the plus size readathon in July. So I have this one 
Fat Girls Hiking that I want to read, if not the whole book, just a couple of anecdotes from. Also, it came highly recommended, Girl of Fire and Thorns, so like early 2010s YA. Also, One to Watch by Casey, nope, Kate Stamen London. Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is Rebecca Weatherspoon's debut YA. I am so excited for this. I adore her adult romances. I could probably read this in two sittings, let's be honest. Oh my god, I can't wait to read this. Probably not this vlog, but eventually. Claire Legrand's adult fantasy book. I don't remember what this is about, but I remember reading the synopsis and being absolutely captivated, so that's gonna be a good time. Oh, I found this one on the database and just thought it sounded good. It's called Promise by Rachel Eliza Griffiths. It just sounded super good, and this author is like a poet turned novelist, and this is her debut novel. Ooh, also Going by Coastal by Dahlia Adler. This book is like a multiverse setup where she has the opportunity to either move in with her mom or move in with her dad, and they live on the opposite sides of the country, and in one life she could pursue a girlfriend and the other life she could pursue a boyfriend so bisexual by coastal summertime read of course this novella about Cardin that I never picked up that will be a super quick read if I decide to get to it and then I have these three oh, and then I still have these three sapphic romances checked out and these are the ones that I think are going to be due the soonest so honestly I should be focusing on these I tonight started the first chapter of The Skin and It's Girl, which is the book about uh, a Palestinian American woman and her family, and this says it's gonna focus on sexuality and like heritage. So far it's just about a girl who was born blue. It's giving wicked, but the writing is beautiful. And that's my library books that I currently have out, so lots to choose from. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Please pardon, but I look like I've been electrocuted this entire clip. It's giving Albert Einstein chic. Hi, happy Monday. I don't even remember what I said I was gonna read yesterday when I was going through my list of options, but to absolutely no one's surprise, I decided to go with one that I don't think I listed, which is the third book in the Rook's Grave Manor series by Catherine Moon. This one's called Sanctuary with Kings. So the series is about these pairings between humans and monsters. The three books follow three different women and they have a connecting storyline in the background about like this really evil guy that traffics humans. <laughs> this book is set following one of the women who that guy had captured for centuries. She's human, but she's also like a demigod. Forgive me Greeks and bisexuals, I don't know my Greek mythology, but the whole idea of hedonism I don't know how to say it out loud. Hold on. Research. Research. Hedonism. Hedonism. That would have been really embarrassing. That's one of those words that I've read but haven't ever pronounced. Hedonism. Hedonism. Okay. Well, this is the daughter of Hedon. So her entire life is fulfilled by sexual acts. Which means she was a really big target to be trafficked because the men who enjoy abusing her, she gets enjoyment from that and she was just used for centuries and like left in a basement and sexually assaulted. So this book starts out where she gets rescued from that and so she is like being sheltered by these male magical creatures. One of them's a minotaur, one of them is a werewolf, one of them's a griffin, <laughs> one of them's a full-sized dragon. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving the romantic pairings in this book. I mean, the fan art cards that she does of each of them are fantastic, so I have that in the back of my head. But for instance, the scene with the full-sized dragon, I was like, come on. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I read Fourth Wing and I was like, ugh. The thing I love about this series in Catherine Moon is the writing style is just so good. So I'm just enjoying the dynamic of, obviously she's this really traumatized woman having to recover from that. And these men are just so gentle. And there's a really fine line between she feels really fulfilled when she is like getting sexual gratification, but also she doesn't want to feel like she's using them or obviously trigger herself. The way that they're just invested investigating like what to do that makes her feel good is so sweet. I am 177 pages into it out of 465 so I'm like a little bit over a third. I think the second book of the series is gonna be my favorite because this one is looking like four stars and I feel like there's about to be a lot of plot in this one as it finishes up. I think it's just a trilogy but I knew I would devour this. I had this one pre-ordered <laughs> so I had to wait a couple of weeks to actually get to it but I read all of that like last night and this morning so I'm going through it quickly. What you win? I need to stop ending off each clip on just a video of my cat but look how handsome he's being. This clip is for all the Gordo stands. Do you have any words for your fans? Coochie? Yeah there it is. On your couch? Can you say that again? 
Do you mind if you, I come on your couch? Yes. <laughs> Shelby's over, the bestie. We got home from the library, picked up these two books, read them. Yep, that's the haul. ASMR on, ebook on. What are you reading? Wow. What are you reading? Oh. Wow. Of Great. course you're reading Donald Trump's biography. <laughs> Gordo, where were you January 6th? <laughs> He's watching the de er, Republican debate. <laughs> I'm reading A Court of Mist and Fury, um, fantasizing about getting fucked by every sand. <laughs> reading or rereading? Oh, rereading. Thank you. Um, yeah. I, I, I did read it back in 2016. <laughs> I, unlike some of you basic bitches, <laughs> had taste back in the day and was literate, unlike <laughs> The way that it is 105 outside and we just sat outside and I put on my fall playlist while we had Froyo and I was like, it's fall. I'm like, I'm gonna go get a pumpkin spice latte. I literally got pumpkin flavored frozen yogurt. I'm like, mm, it's feeling like I need to whip my Uggs out. It was 102 today, it's <laughs> Me when it was only 90 last week, and I was like, there's something in the air. Like, I need a jacket. <laughs> Siri, play Red by Taylor Swift, Taylor's version. <laughs> it's the heat index. <laughs> air quality alert. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> you know what rhymes with red? Bread, which is... <laughs> Which is what this main character is about to, about to experience. Oh, by the way, reading update, because I haven't talked to you since I was like 30% of the way in. I am 84% through this ebook of monsters. There's nothing else going on in this other than fucking, if we're being honest. Actually, there is, because this is, I think, the last book in the series. This is a 500 page book, and I'm 385 pages in, according to Kendall. It's all right. Girl. <laughs> it's fine. Girl. <laughs> Objectively, the plot is like, fine. We just had like all three women and all of their monsters together in the same scene for the first time where they had like an entire orgy with all like 30 of them or whatever. I apologize to the Chipotle employees. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Shelby and I were reading in Chipotle, like <laughs> iPad kids. Well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I finished my book just now. The bad news is I'm on Gordo babysitting duty because he cut himself, long story there, but he has a boo-boo leg and I had to take him to the vet this morning for some shots and some pain meds. So we're recovering. All the other cats in the house are hissing at him because he smells like vaccines. Yes, they're Republicans. I've got his food. I had his water over on the floor with him. But yeah, I also finished my ebook, which I'm kind of proud that I can read a 500 page book in like three or four days. So that was kind of slay. But I think it's gonna be like a three star book just because I love Catherine Moon. Like she's one of my favorite writers, but this one just didn't feel up to her typical par. Maybe because I didn't love the men in this one as much. They just felt like typical. None of them really like called out to me. Also one of them was a dragon. So that was kind of weird, but also the book obviously like solves the issue they've been having the entire series, but it didn't like reintroduce any of the other characters or like really talk about it at all other than like, we're gonna go take him down. And I didn't understand the resolution of the actual drama of the plot. <laughs> so like, it was fine. Like I flew through it just cause it was so smutty, but the storyline in it was really weak, which is crazy. Cause I think this might be like one of my least favorite Catherine Moon books. And typically her books are nothing to scoff at. So a bit disappointed. My audiobook for A Promised Land has come back in. This is a 29 hour audiobook. Again, I made it like partially way through it and I don't really remember what, so I'm gonna find my place and then maybe do some audiobook listening. But everyone thoughts and prayers for Gordo during his difficult time. Honchong, he said I got boo boo. Hi, for those of y'all playing along at home, I'm now on page. 305 of this. I've been listening for like four hours and read like 70 pages. So she's a chonker, but loving the audiobook. But in fun news, I got an email from a company called Diamond Art Club. Let me show you. Basically, they were like, Hi, would you like to try this? And then your followers can get a discount. And I was like, Yeah. So I thought, what better audiobook listening content than to do a diamond painting? So I'm sure you will have seen like the ASMR TikToks of people doing these. I got 
sunflowers so it could match with my apartment and I could hang it up if I wanted to. Let me unbox this real quick and I can show you what it is and we could do it together. This is like paint by numbers but with rhinestones and I just need a mindless activity while I listen to my audiobook. And here are all of our jewels. This might be a dangerous thing to do with a cat on the couch next to me but hey. Oh shoot, this comes with a lot. What is that? It comes with like a little magnet and washi tape. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna start with the corner closest to me. Okay, this is 18. Here it is. Do I need a pair of scissors for this? Life's all natural scissors. I mean, I have a lot of perfecting to do with how straight my lines are, but I'm gonna be here all day. <laughs> if you and your cat would like to try out doing a diamond painting, see my link down below. Get 20% off with code WHITNEY20. I like James Charles. Oh. This is an angle you haven't seen before because I'm in my kitchen seated at my counter making waffles. Life hack, if you have bananas, make them into banana waffles and then just freeze them instead of buying toaster waffles. I've been listening to my audiobook all day. By the way, I got a ton done on my diamond. What's that called? Diamond art? I keep wanting to call it a painting and it's not. That shit's fun. But my entire day of listening to this book has only gotten me to page 400. I'm learning a lot. Am I really downloading every single thing he's saying? Not really. But I am appreciating it for the overview of everything he's gotten into. I was gonna continue this vlog until I finished this audiobook. But after today where I literally, like since 10 a.m. I have had this audiobook on. And I only read like 100 pages of it. I think I might be here for like two more weeks if I waited to be done with it before finishing the vlog. So I'm gonna call it quits here. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Bye!